I'm Sarah Borks from Keto here in Los Angeles for Eat Well 2019, NERID's annual conference. I'm joined today by Owen Thomas, CEO of Boston Properties. Welcome, Owen. Sarah, thank you. Pleasure to be here. So Boston Properties has been reporting healthy leasing volumes throughout 2019. How does that square with signs of moderating macroeconomic fundamentals? Well, Sarah, you're right. We've had a terrific year leasing so far. Uh, through three quarters, we've leased about 5.9 million square feet in our portfolio. And uh, over the last five plus years, our average leasing volumes for in the entire year is 5.5 million feet. So in three quarters, we've already beat our um, full year numbers uh, averages. Um, uh, and you're right. That doesn't square with what you uh, see in terms of the economic data and what you read in the paper. But a couple things I would mention. One, I think leasing and real estate activity is not a leading indicator of economic activity. It's actually more of a lagging indicator. Uh, I think as the economy is slowing, um, I think the slowdown in real estate procurement decisions tends to lag. So that's one thing. Uh, and then second, I'm not sure that slowdown is impacting a lot of the customers that we're dealing with. Uh, a lot of the leasing that we've, we've been doing has been in the technology sectors, in the life science sectors, and I'm not sure you know, those aggregate uh, GDP um, growth numbers are, uh, um, uh, are actually an accurate reflection of how uh, those companies are performing. And what benefits does Boston Properties see from accessing private equity partners? And do you expect to do more on that front? Yeah, so um, we have been much more active in working with private equity partners over the last few years. Uh, in fact, this last quarter, we announced a major joint venture on a development that we own in San Jose called Platform 16. And uh, we were uh, very pleased and honored to uh, have CPP uh, from Canada join us in that property. They bought a 45% interest. And uh, they are a leading global uh, institutional real estate investor. And they're actually, they are a partner in another one of our projects, Santa Monica Business Park, uh, which we purchased last year. Uh, the reason we did that is really twofold. Uh, one, uh, we are seeing a tremendous number of opportunities uh, around our, um, throughout our company in all of our regions to make new investments, both buying existing assets uh, as well as in new developments. And um, uh, we're stretching our financial resources. So we, we use cash flow from operations, from asset sales. Uh, we're delivering new developments, so we're creating debt capacity, but we're not going to increase our leverage. Uh, we don't want to access the public equity market at our uh, current valuation. And so we're bringing in private capital to stretch our uh, equity capital further. So that's one reason. And then second is risk. Uh, this is a development. It's not pre-leased. It's a million one square feet. And uh, we, we thought a good capital allocation decision was to share the risk of that development. And there's been a lot of media attention on the shared workspace segment. You talked about that a lot yesterday. Yeah. How does Boston Properties view developments in this area? Yeah. Well, the shared workspace has, uh, business has been an important trend in the office business around the world, and particularly in the United States over the, this cycle. Uh, today, about uh, just under 2% of all office space in the U.S. is leased to shared workspace operators or operated by shared work workspace operators. And that number's higher in New York and San Francisco. It's nearly uh, 4%. Uh, so it's grown, and we think it's going to grow further. Uh, we think that the product is attractive to individuals and small companies because it's an easy way for them to procure space. And also our larger corporate clients, uh, they're interested in procuring a percentage of their space on a flexible basis, certainly not all of it. So you know, we think the industry is poised uh, to grow further. Uh, the big news um, over the last couple of months, obviously, has been the, uh, what's happened with WeWork. Um, obviously, they're not going forward with their IPO, and they're going through a leadership change and a recapitalization. Uh, and um, my expectation is that may slow down, at least in the short term, uh, some of this growth. Uh, but we also think you know, WeWork has 50% market share uh, in this business. And uh, if you believe in the growth profile that I mentioned earlier, you know, I think they do have a, um, a strong opportunity in front of them for, for further growth. 
So anyway, we, we think the business is here to stay. Uh, we, we have an important relationship with WeWork. We do business with some of the other operators. And we actually have our own offering called Flex by BXP. Uh, we have one uh, facility opened at the Peru Center in Boston, and we're opening a couple other stores in Boston. So we're um, pursuing this opportunity uh, among, uh, through various different channels. Great. Owen, oh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Pleasure to be here again. And for more on REIT World 2019, be sure to visit NearEAT's website, REIT.com.